Today's uh, big idea is is fairly simple. We just tend to overlook it. Don't your, set yourself up for failure. Don't set yourself up for failure. Sometimes we think, I haven't done that in a while, so I won't do it ever again. Um, I can face it. Um, I've grown and matured, whatever. These are all different things that our brain tells us to make us feel better about ourselves, which is neither here nor there. Uh, but the problem is, is that it's a false sense of security and confidence. Okay, Don't set yourself up for failure. Let me give you some examples. If you have a problem with pornography, you shouldn't be staying up all night. You should be sleeping at night. The only reason to be staying up at night is if you're working, in which case you should be sleeping during the day. Um, but either way, you know, just that idea of while everybody else who's mature and responsible is living a disciplined life, I don't have to live a disciplined life and then I'm going to be able to overcome my pornography addiction. It's not, not really reasonable. Um, well, here's another example. Being home alone all the time with internet access and a smartphone. That's just asking to mess up, and you know. So, so what's the big what's the big idea here? Well, <laughs> don't set yourself up for failure. Where it's like, um, you know, I'll just be strong enough. I'll do it this time. I, I can I can. It's a bad idea, and and it's not going to work out how you want it to. And then you're going to feel guilty. Then you're going to have to start the process over again. It's like when you have a drug problem. Don't hang out with people who do drugs. They're my friends. They did it. Like, if, if they were really your friends, they, they would help you get off of drugs. They'd help you stay clean. If they were really your friends, they, they, would, they would help push you towards getting better. Maybe it's time that you make new friends. Maybe it's time that you start hanging out with different people. Oh, everybody's doing drugs. No, everybody you're hanging around with is doing drugs. Stop hanging around with them. Stop setting yourself for failure. I, I have a problem drinking. So every day I go by the bar and... I'm never strong enough, so I go inside the bar. Stop going that way. Find a different way to go. I mean, th there's a lot of times when we just set ourselves up for failure, and, and we fail because we've put ourselves in a position to fail. Realign yourself to where you won't fail. Um, here's another example. When you have depression, taking a day off without talking to people and just sitting in your house. Well, I've been working on my depression. I've been working on my anxiety, so I'm just going to take this day and sit on my and sit on my couch. No, it has to be a change of lifestyle. It has to be a change of lifestyle. That's not what I do anymore. Well, I just need a break. Find it some other way. Find a break by going outside. Find a break by by you know, not sitting there watching TV all day. There's there's got to be another way you can have a break. Um, you know, maybe here's an example. Take a nice relaxing bath and then get up and go do something. Don't don't get in that rut of, of allowing yourself to just keep going back. Well, I, I try and then I go back. You know what my wife is doing is she just started uh, started exercising herself, um, di different jogging and that kind of stuff. And she said this. She said I want to do it every single day because every time that I take a day off, a day go turns into two days. That's I get that. I really do. When, when you're trying to make a lifestyle change, sometimes you have to go to extreme limits. So I, I definitely do. I do. I definitely do get, do get that. Um, surfing the internet, watching shows that are not encouraging. These are things that you probably shouldn't be doing anything. Well, well, I do, I'm doing anymore. Well, it's okay if I watch Poltergeist. If I watched all these, it, it's okay. It won't have an effect on me. So you have anxiety and you're watching something that's scary. So let's let's stop for a minute and just just think about this. You have a problem with fear, and so you're watching things that cause fear. That, that's not a good idea. That's setting yourself up for failure. Don't set yourself up for failure. Um, so what we do is we kind of lie to ourselves. But, but I like it. It's not a matter of whether you like it or not. It's a matter of will it affect you. And the answer is yes, because everything affects us. The things that we listen to, the things that we watch, the things that we do, it all affects us. It all has an effect and, and a ripple pond effect You know of of changing our actions for tomorrow and changing our friends of tomorrow and just all these different things that we do today based off a lot in a large part what happened to us yesterday is creating constantly creating our, our future and you might think oh i'm just living through life no everything that you do is setting in further habits or making new habits you will be affected 
Um, some people are more emotionally sensitive than others. So with that, it's just like it's just like drinking. You know, not everybody can handle the same amount of alcohol. Some people have a higher tolerance level. Some people's, uh, you know, different things like things like that. And it's the same thing for everything, including emotions. If you are a more emotional person, than other people, um, you you can only handle so much, and you might not be able to handle as much as other people. Which means you might have to limit your interactions with certain draining people. And at least until you get back on your feet. You, you might have to spend extra time with people who encourage you after being with someone who discourages you. Uh, you might have to spend more, uh, watch less TV or watch uh, different TV than you have been watching. Maybe you're going to have to start changing the kind of music that you're listening to. You might say, well, I, I don't want to do that. That's, that's a big change. Well, if you want big success, you have to make big changes. Um, you might just not be able to handle as much as other people, and the quicker you accept that, the quicker you'll be on the road to recovery. Um, you'll never be strong enough to tempt yourself and put yourself in bad situations without consequences. You'll never be that strong. Never. Well, I've been off porn for a while, so that means that I can be home alone with internet access now. Uh, no, you can't. You always need... I, I, I've been off of porn for a long time now, and yet, I still have porn blockers on all my devices. In my house, it is extremely difficult to find porn. I bet you could do it if you had 30 minutes to waste and that kind of stuff. But after you've been off of porn for a while, it, you can just get really antsy even thinking about that kind of stuff. So it's like kind of a mood killer, I guess. Well, I guess for some people it might not be. But anyways... Um, You'll never be strong enough to tempt yourself. Stop, stop thinking, oh, I've grown. That's not who I am anymore. I've changed all these different things. Anybody can relapse. There's a statement that people say, once a drug addict, always a drug addict. That's true. Um, not, not saying that you can't ever stop doing drugs, but there'll always be that. You'll always, there'll always be something that you're drawn to. And everybody wants to think that like we can achieve this state of perfection on Earth. Like in this life, we can, you know, rise above every every adversity and learn to be perfect. And that's all that's nonsense. That's just complete nonsense. It, it's just never going to happen. Um, you will never be strong enough to tempt yourself and put yourself in bad situations. And oh, nothing bad's going to happen. So let's look at the verse of the day. Um, it's from Genesis 39, verses 11 through 12. There's this guy named Joseph, and he's working for this dude. But his, that, that dude that he's working for has a wife who's like super into Joseph. And so all she wants to do is have sex with him. And all he wants to do is just do his job and, and, and do it well. So he's, he's doing a great job. Um, he keeps not sleeping with her, not sleeping with her. Well, finally, she gives him this ultimatum. And that's Genesis 31, 11, or 39, 11 through 12. It says, but one day when he, he being Joseph, went into the house to do his work, none of the men of the house was, uh, were there in the house. She caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me, sleep with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and got out of the house. So she tries to force him into it, into it, like, you know, oh, if maybe, it, maybe it'll be a turn on for him if I just be more assertive or something. I don't know, whatever. And so she goes for it. He just takes off. And in the process of taking off, she still has his, his clothes. It was like, uh, I'm guessing it's like a one piece, uh, kind of like a, I don't know. But either way, she evidently had a death grip on the thing. Um, I don't know exactly how it looked like, but I can imagine she must have had a pretty strong grip if he just like darted out and she still had it in her hands. Um, so anyways, uh, why is that the verse of the day? Because here's the thing, here's the thing. Joseph realized that he wasn't strong enough. He wasn't strong enough to keep facing her and, no, I won't do that. He realized that sometimes... To have a big victory, you have to do a real dramatic thing. So he darted out there. Oh, I, I left my clothes. Who cares? Moving on. I can find more clothes. And uh, just that kind of commitment to the goal. So what's our action step for this? Well, the first thing is be willing to live different than others live. So don't don't start don't don't start looking at everybody around you saying, man, they get to do this. Why can't I do this? Why can't I live like that? Be willing to live different. If you want different results, you're gonna have to change what you're doing. You can't live the same life every single day, then be disappointed with the same results you've always gotten. There has to be a point when you say, no, th I know what that road leads to. I'm going to try this other way. I'm going to try this other road. I'm going to do something different this time. Um, so be willing to live different than others. Oh, well, my friend is this, and they still, well, first off, maybe they are dealing with that, and they just haven't told you. Then second off, they're not you. 
You can't do the same thing. Well, that's not fair. Whoever said life was fair? There's some things that I can do that my spouse can't do. And I'm talking about both because of my job and because of um, different, we have different struggles. And because, I mean, there's just so many different, different scenarios that play out. Everybody's different. And you can't say just because somebody else is something means I get to do it. That's just not, not how it works. Um, then the next thing after this, so, so you're willing to make a change. The next step is keep a journal and discover your hardest times. When are the times that you're most prone to fail? When are the times you're most likely to struggle? Um, you know, all these different things. And once you start writing them down every single time in a journal, you'll be able to figure it out. Maybe it's a certain time of day. Maybe it's uh, when the when the weather is a certain way. Excuse me. Maybe it's certain times of the year. Uh, whatever. You know, maybe you feel more lonely around this time, so you're more prone to look at porn. Maybe you f feel more depressed around when it's raining outside, so you feel more prone to, you know, sit on your couch and do nothing. W whatever. Th this whole um, different people dealing with dealing with different things here. Okay, so you're, you're keeping a journal. You're willing to change. You're keeping a journal to try and figure out a pattern, to try and figure out what's causing it, to try and figure out what you can avoid and what you can reduce. So then after you after you you're, you made the decision, you're, you're, you're keeping a journal, the next thing, adjust your schedule and your habits accordingly. If you find a, a serious loophole in your defenses, make a change. Change how you're doing things. Well, Tuesday I'm always home alone and so don't be home. Make it where every Tuesday you take a walk to the park and sit in the park with a book. I mean, there's got to be something you can do if you're wanting a different a different consequence, you're, especially because our brain really likes habits. So if you do something, even something that, that you don't really get pleasure from, once you do it for so long, it's like, okay, this is just what we do. It's like people who are in um, uh, abusive relationships, oftentimes they'll go from abusive relationship to abusive relationship, and they'll start even sometimes enjoying that. Um, like people who get stuck in the whole um, sex trafficking porn ring kind of deal. Sometimes they'll get so hurt for so long that it's like they have an addiction and a, and a dependence on that hurt. It's a very psychologically confusing place to be in, but unfortunately, some of us get there. So, uh, learn to adjust your schedule and your habits accordingly. Maybe you don't even try this alone. Uh, you're going to have to really mess around, have trial and error, just see what works best. Um, you don't always have to be strong enough to rise above, okay? You just have to be smart enough to avoid it. I'll say that again. You don't always have to be strong enough to rise above it, just smart enough to avoid it. Well, I know that if I do this, then I'll do this, and then I'll do that, just like I always do. I've got to make a different choice this time. I hope that that was helpful. Once again, that big idea is don't set yourself up for failure. Uh, have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you later.